This is the Overdue Homework Podcast. Welcome to the show. That's Trav. I'm Drew. And I'm Trav. This is the Overdue Homework Podcast. And as always, we are here to give you our opinions on 80s and 90s media. Please contact us at podcast at overduehomework.com. Trav, how you doing? Great, Drew. Great, Great. as always. Great. Obviously, I live the life of doing my homework for this podcast, and it doesn't really get any better than that. Right. So. Uh, yeah, overdue homework is life. Is life. <laughs> <laughs> doing a lot of uh, homework ahead of time, so Definitely. some awesome content. Uh, but how are you, Drew? I'm doing great. I can't complain. Um, this was a fun episode to do. I'm excited to talk some Ren and Stimpy. Uh, nothing new to report in my life, I guess. Just the same old, same old going on over here. So, well, you gotta at least tell me about the birthday party. Oh that yes, yes, I yes, was yes. The uncool kid that <laughs> didn't show up for because I hear there was Pokemon cards involved. There were Pokemon cards involved. So I had my 40th birthday party. We had it at a bar in like a little room. It was fun. Uh, some of the guests brought their kids, and before I left the door, before I walked out the door of my house, I was like. I got to grab some Pokemon packs for these kids. So it was like, thanks for coming to my birthday, Pokemon pack. Thanks for coming to my birthday, Pokemon pack. Nice. So it was great as I punched the microphone. But uh, James' son pulled an EX po- uh, Pikachu. Nice. And I was like, <sighs> <laughs> why did I give him that pack? <laughs> and it was for, it was a sword and shield pack, too. So it was a little bit of an older pack, nice. too. That's, I almost didn't. That's James' luck. Yes. Period. Period. And it's passed off to his kid. I almost did not bring that pack with because I'm like, oh, it's a sword and shield. I should probably keep this one. And yeah. I brought it. I'm like, whatever. It's a loose one. I'm bringing it. And yep. then EX Pikachu. And I'm like, come on. Nice. Come on. <laughs> but the party was great. We had lots of fun. Uh, I felt a little sick the next day because I had a little bit too much to drink. But that's the way it goes, you know? <laughs> that's the way it that's goes. That's the way it goes. My wife was great. She got it all organized, helped me get it all organized while she did most of the work. And then at the end, she was like, I don't know what you want. So you're going to have to help me do this. So <laughs> I helped organize it. It was fun. It was cool to see some people. And you didn't have to work time. the next day, right? Did not have to oh, work perfect, the next perfect. day. It was my long weekend. So nice. it was great. It was a great time to have a have a birthday party. Boom. Lordy, Lordy, look who's 40. Oh, yeah. Right. It's me. Bummer. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> Bummer. So in this episode, we got no articles because it's Ren and Stimpy. Yep. Uh, so if you want to learn some more about Ren and Stimpy, go back to our original Ren and Stimpy episode, and you're going to learn all about John Chris Falusi, all about, I uh, can't think of his name, the voice actor that does Ren and Stimpy, Billy West. Billy West. Learn all about Billy West, learn all about Bob Camp, learn all about all that stuff. So go hit that episode up. I believe it's like episode 9, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in Ish. there. Look for Ren and Stimpy. It's pretty simple. It's we only pretty got simple. we only got fifty episodes, so yeah. Uh, go look that up if you feel so inclined. Trav, let's do that homework review. Let's do it. And like I said, we're doing Ren and Stimpy season two, episodes one through three, and that is episodes one through three according to Paramount Plus. So if you were watching this on DVD or something like that, were you watching it on DVD, Trav? I watched it on Paramount. You watched I have it? the hard copy, but it's just easier to it, pop it on Paramount. It really is. And plus, I think the order on the DVD might be different. That's than, what I was worried so I'm about, I'm pretty too. sure that's what it is. So. Figured we'd been giving Paramount orders. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. so we're going Paramount order. And uh, there's one episode in particular that I'm very surprised we're going to talk about. I'm very surprised is on Paramount Plus, considering they had such a problem with uh, the uh, ghost one, which was oh. called the ghost story. No. The one, the, the one that we covered in our already. Halloween episode. Yeah, yes, yeah. that one is not on Paramount Plus, but the one in this is, and I'm very surprised at that. Very weird. Very very weird. So, uh, season one or season two, episode one is Ren's toothache, and oh my god, this episode, it is unbelievably hard to watch. Yeah, it is. Like unbelievably hard yeah. to watch. Lauren had to look away. Uh, <laughs> I was watching it, doing my homework. And Kristen, my wife, she came downstairs and was like, oh, my God, I don't remember like any Ren and Stimpy, but this episode is ingrained into my brain. Yep. How can you forget this episode? It's beyond brutal to watch. It's beyond brutal. Beyond brutal to With watch. Pulling out the nerve endings. Boing, boing, boing. And then he's like, he's like, oh, and he just oh. sleeps peacefully after that. Yeah. And then we have the creepiest. Uh, nerve ending fairy in the world yeah, yeah. so uh <laughs> so folks here we go on this episode 
Uh, it opens up, obviously, in Ren and Stimpy's bedroom, like a lot of episodes of Ren and Stimpy in their bedroom, yep. rounding out the night, getting ready to go to bed. Yep. They are such a loving couple, aren't they? I mean, it's so <laughs> it's so blatantly obvious that they are a couple now that you're an adult watching this. Yeah. It's so blatantly obvious. Had no inkling of that while I was a child, but it's so blatantly obvious that they are a loving, loving couple. Ren, he's going to bed, and Stimpy is demonstrating some very good oral hygiene. There are some good lessons, actually, in Ren and Stimpy. I was shocked. Like, this is the first seemingly actual good lesson for kids to follow. Brush your goddamn teeth. Brush your goddamn teeth. <laughs> I thought that was crazy. Every other thing has been, this makes no sense. Why are we showing this to our kids? Exactly. Like, well, brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Otherwise, if you don't, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> so there's maybe this is part of like the checks and balances within Nickelodeon's structure where they're like, you got to have a message occasionally. Please, <laughs> yeah. please, 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 please. What was with him? What was with Stimpy saving the bloody toothpaste spit? Uh, see, that's one of that's where we <laughs> get a little gray area happening. I don't understand that. And not only that, but he has multiple. He has many jars. Many of it. jars. He's been saving it for a while. I guess it's better than like saving jars of urine or something like that. Slightly better. It is. I guess <laughs> that is true. Well, Stimpy ends up waking up Ren with his extreme flossing. Like extreme flossing. Construction site. (laughs) Extreme flossing. So Ren, he makes his way to the bathroom, and Ren has terrible, terrible oral hygiene. What are you doing, man? Duh, I'm brushing my teeth, Ren. Boy, what a waste of time. You'll be sorry when all your teeth fall out. Uh, you talking kid stuff. Crazy stuff. I've never brushed my teeth before, and not about to start now. (laughs) Well... Maybe Ren should start brushing. Maybe he should. His teeth are hideous. They're horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> His smile into the mirror is so grotesque. You could almost say that it was a grotesque close-up, yeah. as you as you yeah. would, as you would one. The grotesque close-ups in these episodes aren't as extreme as they have been in past no. episodes, especially in season one. We get away from the butts. We get away from the butts. <laughs> and we get into the mouth. And into the mouth on this one. It's just so brutal. The mouth pain. If you've ever experienced mouth pain, this episode just is like... It's just so brutal. It's <laughs> so brutal. I'm going to keep saying. His teeth are absolutely hideous and very smelly. Very smelly. And he breaks the mirror, obviously, because <laughs> yeah. he's, he's very ugly. Uh, later in bed, uh, Ren is awoken by his hideous, hideous tooth pain. Why does it hurt? <laughs> Stimpy, would you regale us with a story of the tooth ba- beaver? Beaver. <laughs> <clears throat> Stimpy, would you regale us with the story of the tooth beaver? The tooth beaver. How does one even think of the tooth beaver? I don't know. This is <laughs> this is pre Angry Beaver, so yes. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Did they pull from this? I don't know. <laughs> Inside every mouth there are teeth, and whenever you find teeth, you'll find the tooth beaver. Just gnawing on that nerve ending, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just destroying it. Just, just destroying oh it. Oh my god. Because, uh, of course, the nerve ending is the tastiest part of the body. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Tasty, tasty nerve endings. <laughs> and the tooth beaver knows this. That's why he lives in your mouth. He's a tooth beaver. Yep. Just yep. hammering that nerve ending. Literally hammering that nerve en- ending. Uh, we leave Ren in a pain coma. And magically, it's the next night because the title card told us so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ren is still not convinced that brushing his teeth is a good idea. Well, hello, Ren. I guess you're ready to brush your teeth with me tonight. No, man. I told you, brushing your teeth is for humans. Kid stuff. (laughs) So, let's check that mirror. And Ren's teeth turn to dust. To dust. Hideous. (laughs) And then he goes to bed and proceeds to grind his teeth to more dust overnight. Bone shivers to the core when he's doing (laughs) that. Oh, my God. The way the teeth chippings pile up on the bed disgusting oh my god and he's just grinding those teeth just oh just absolutely hideous the next morning and ren reveals a mouth full of stinky tooth holes and dangling nerve endings <laughs> <laughs> maybe i mean maybe we should have started this with a little bit of a trigger warning or something if you have a hard time listening to tooth pain but you should have done your homework so you you knew what you were in for <laughs> And it's too stinky. His mouth is too stinky even for the tooth beaver. Phew. This place is too stinky for me. Uh, Too stinky for the flies on Stimpy's litter box as well. Cripes, what is that smell? We're trying to eat here. And you're airing your old stinky old gum holes? What are you trying to do, make us puke? And that's coming from a fly. 
Like <laughs> that's, that uh, it's it's funny when they are actually eating the the grossness of Stimpy's litter box. They're all they're all saying taste, taste, taste. <laughs> just the weirdness, man, the weirdness. Yeah. And that is the final straw. And Ren realizes all he has left is stinky gum holes. He probably should have brushed. I'm good. Uh, thank you. He probably should have brushed. Yeah. <laughs> but Stimpy to the rescue. Look on the bright side. At least you still got your nerve endings. My nerve endings? What good are they going to me? <laughs> well, would you like me to tell you a little story? A story? <laughs> His second story of the episode already. <laughs> <laughs> if you put your nerve endings under your pillow tonight, the nerve ending fairy will come and take them away, and she'll leave you $100 bills. <laughs> and then you can buy new tea. Oh, Stimpy, you are my friend. <laughs> so it's time to pluck some nerve endings out of your own mouth. Yeah. Go ahead, Ren. It's just un- unbelievable, honestly. Might be one of the most painful scenes in Nickelodeon history. Yes. <laughs> I would ag- I would agree with that. I would agree with that. It's got to be up there for one of the most disturbing scenes ever to air on Nickelodeon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the nerve endings are now placed with care under Ren's pillow. Without fail, the nerve ending fairy arrives, and he smells something stinky. <laughs> he takes those nerve endings, those wiggly, wiggly nerve endings. It's like they're their own little animals or something. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's interesting because it must be like a violin or something, like the sound that they're like, wheat, wheat, when they're wiggling. <laughs> it's, Ugh. And he slaps them on the back of his neck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, you little rascals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's time to pay up. $100 bills? Nope. Ball of lint. That's good enough for Ren. That's good enough for him. <laughs> the next morning, Ren is devastated when he reveals that ball of lint. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, Ren, he mopes to the kitchen. And Stimpy presents Ren with breakfast. Is it my mush? <laughs> nope, it's a birthday present because it's Ren's birthday, too, all of a sudden in this episode. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. For me? You should have. <laughs> it's a giant tooth. Just absolutely absurd. So absurd. <laughs> Ren puts it in his mouth and he couldn't be happier. Go ahead, try it on. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves his new tooth. <laughs> Turns out it was Stimpy's tooth. Yeah. <laughs> And then we get a final close-up on the one last uh, close-up on his wiggly nerve endings because, yeah, why not? Why not? And his three nerve endings for one tooth. (laughs) Sure, (laughs) sure, sure, sure. (laughs) End segment. Thank the Lord. End segment on that. Seriously. (laughs) Every time I rewatched Ren and Stimpy for the podcast here, I was like, do I really have to watch this one again? I know. I did. I did as well, but it was, I mean, that's our tax territory. (laughs) I'm (laughs) ready to fast forward that part. That is right up there with one of the worst scenes we've, one of the, some of the worst visual images we've had in all of the podcasts. Seriously. Uh, but thankfully, we get a little uh, newish log commercial to t- kind <laughs> yep. of clean our palates here. Uh, the only thing different is that there's new versions of log, and then he's got puppet show log, electro log, GI log, baby wet myself log, right, and invisible log, and yeah. the visible log, which is hilarious <laughs> that they're back to back. Log underwear, anatomically correct log. Yeah, that's. Uh, that log had a penis, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> and Super Deluxe Ultra Log, because it has a squirrel nailed to the top of it. Love Hur- it. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry, supplies can't last on products this good. <laughs> I got a feeling those products aren't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think they're safe. <laughs> Anatomically correct log. How do you get that past uh, Nickelodeon sensors? How do you get that past? <laughs> I really don't know. Like, how do you... How do, how do you do that? I think that? they stopped watching at the nerve ending part and said, <laughs> you know what? Just put it on. <laughs> yeah, whoever was in charge of quality control for that segment was like, all right, moving on. I yeah. can't do it. Is anything harder than this to watch? No? Okay, then just put it on. <laughs> just put and, it on. It's good. Like, this isn't hard to watch, it's but if, as long as you don't see it, we can put it in the episode. <sighs> oh, boy. Anatomically correct log. Made me laugh out loud uh, almost every time I watch yeah. it. Uh, so our next segment is called The Rubber Nipple Salesman. It's another classic. Oh, it's one yeah, of those yeah. episodes that you think of when you think of Ren and Stampy. Definitely. It was on the VHSs that you oh, could yeah. rent with oh, three yeah. episodes on there. It right? was. It, you know, maybe that's why I recognize it so much. I feel like it was in heavy rotation on Nickelodeon. Yeah. But still, you're right. It was one of those, like, when it was in the what a compilation VHSs, it was always on there. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, Ren and Stimpy, in this episode, they meet up with some old friends. 
Uh, this episode makes tons of references to episodes from season one, and we're going to try to point out as many as we can. Uh, for one, the truck there in is playing Happy Happy Joy Joy, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, the boys, they are out to sell some nipples. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Stimpy, with your invention and my savvy, we can have cornered the rubber nipple market. We'll be millionaires. We'll rule the world. Tisk, Ren. I'm not in this for financial gain. I have a dream. Is it weird that he was like mocking Martin Luther King with his I have a dream little speech that he has? Kind of. It's kind of weird, right? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like, I don't understand why are you mocking a civil rights like icon for rubber nipples? Not sure. It's kind of weird, but that's, that's right. another. Uh, they stopped watching you know, last episode. So, uh, Stimpy he says. Then I believe one day everyone everywhere will know the wonders of my nipples. <laughs> and then <laughs> Ren smashes him in the face with an iron. Okay, <laughs> fine. You keep your dream, and I'll keep my money. Now shut up and drive. <laughs> I'm driving. I'm driving. <laughs> uh, Stimpy's face should have been way more destroyed by that iron. Definitely. When, when Ren pulls it away from his face, when you look at the iron, because Stimpy's face isn't on screen, there's like skin and stuff attached to it. Yeah. And then when you go, when they do cut to Ren, or to Stimpy, his face is just kind of caved in a little bit. Yeah. I was hoping for a skinless faced Stimpy. Definitely. I guess you had to cut something out for some of the stuff that happens a little bit later <laughs> yeah. in this segment. A little give and take here. A little give and, little give and take. So our first stop is the Fire Chief, obviously I, obviously iconically from Fire Dog, which is an episode we covered in a different episode of ours. Episode, 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 episode. <laughs> I can't. I'll say that even some more, I guess. Uh, he still does not like little people. Circus M words, as he puts it. <laughs> I've had it up to here with the likes of you people. <laughs> uh, Ren, he is in charge of the sale because Stimpy can't even whiz by himself. You don't know how to sell anything. <laughs> he doesn't. Ren gets smashed by a shovel, and there will be no sale. That scrape is brutal. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were circus. Hmm. I'm not going to say it because it's just, mm. it's just offensive. Uh, next stop on their uh, little uh, door-to-door sales spree here is Mr. Horse, also from Fire Dogs and the Gritty Kitty commercials and other cameos, too, and one a little bit later on in this episode that we're doing. So, I love me some Mr. Horse. I don't know what it is about his character, but it's, it's just something about that character that I just absolutely love. No, sir. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> Uh, so they go up to his door, and they ring the doorbell and knock one of the two, and he is behind a very heavily fortified door. Half a dozen locks on that thing, and he just goes <laughs> down, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, click, click. <laughs> uh, Mr. Horse does seem to be a bit off his rocker in this <laughs> in this episode. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense with Ren and Stimpy, because every character in Ren and Stimpy, for the most part, is completely manic and crazy. So it makes sense that uh, Mr. Horse would be dealing with some weird emotional baggage i guess yeah. <laughs> do i know you did my wife send you no sir but you look like someone that could really use rubber nipples <laughs> <laughs> and then we see that mr horse is covered from head to toe in rubber that is that is quite the sight <laughs> yeah <laughs> how do i know you're not from the fbi sir i assure you we're just salesmen so I made a mistake, one mistake. Can't a man start over? Do I have to keep on paying? Huh? Maybe I should make another mistake. Maybe two more. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> this whole time, Ren and Stimpy are shaking and sweating and fearing for their lives. <laughs> Please, sir. I think one mistake is plenty. Just let me show you what's inside here. Don't do it, man. I'm not armed. We really need to sell you some rubber nipples. See? Oh. It is a nipple. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, what you must think of me. Forget everything I said. So, nipples, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I don't think I have any use for rubber nipples. I tell you what, though. Do you have any rubber walrus protectors? Call the police. <laughs> Truly disturbing. <laughs> so disturbing. <laughs> Call the police. And it's interesting, too, because Mr. Horse is a horse. He has hooves, not fingers. Yep. And he's holding that walrus by the rubbery fingers coming from his hooves. How weird. Just just so weird. Just so weird. <laughs> well, with no sales thus far, Stimpy takes the lead at the next house. Oh, please. 
Get a hold of yourself, man. All right, all right. Shut up and get in the truck. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop, it's Mr. and Mrs. Pipe. And of course, we remember them from The Boy Who Cried Rat. Yes. Which is another very iconic episode, which was probably uh, on the same VHS tape as this episode. Yeah. And they already <laughs> forgot what they look like. <laughs> yeah, they already did. <laughs> Hello, sir. Would you like to buy some shiny new rubber nipples? I made them myself. Hmm. Nipples, huh? Let me ask the wife. Honey, are we short on rubber nipples? Now, dear, don't you go buying new nipples when you haven't used the ones you already have. Well, maybe I would if they weren't all chewed up. (laughs) As we look at a display of many rubber nipples. Come on in, boys. Let's see what you got. (laughs) (laughs) And there you have it. Ren and Stimpy are closing in on their very first sale. Good for them, right? Yeah. Idiocy be damned. (laughs) Then we get a display from Stimpy's very versatile nipples. <laughs> They're not just for your mouth anymore. Nowadays, there's 1,001 uses for my nipples. I mean, you got the light bulb on the ceiling. I mean, that makes sense. For You can use his nipples for something like storing your nose hair trimmings. Something for the little women. <laughs> and then, of course, finger gloves. For filthy and repulsive things. <laughs> Honey, I have to touch filthy and repulsive things every day, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> and then I love how Stimpy's like, and watch this now. And yeah. Nose plugs. And then they also protect your eyes from UV rays because nipples on your eyeballs. Why I not? Yes. And, of course... They make great hickeys. Wait till the guys at the office get a load of this. Do you want to sleep in the yard? You mean for a change? (laughs) And how can you forget no more frosty knees? Wow, they are warm. Here's five bucks. I'll take the whole mess of them. Now get out. (laughs) And that's it. They're out. He he kicks them out. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy are kicked out uh, of the house and onto the back of bulls. And they ride off off to the horizon. Yeah. Roll credits. Roll credits. And it's kind of got that classic Looney Tune that burn burn it, when yeah. they're riding away. So, I mean, it must be an homage to Looney Tunes, but it's still the weirdest thing ever. Like, they didn't have any idea how to end this episode. They're like, I got nothing. Let's have them ride off on bulls to the, into the sunset or something. Yeah. Very, very, very weird. Five, five <laughs> bucks is a lot of money. Five bucks is a lot of money. Got him got the whole mess of nipples. Got him the whole mess of nipples. So with that one out of the way, we can move on to the next episode. And this one is a 30-minute banger. Well, 20, 22 minutes, but, you know, TV. And it's called Son of Stimpy. Uh, How much did you remember this episode? Not very much at all, honestly. I remember it being a thing. I remember Stinky, you know, as being a character, but hardly any of the episodes. So it was interesting to watch this one from almost fresh eyes like yeah i kind of had an idea what was going to happen but from scene to scene it was almost completely new to me yeah i feel like i remember the end yes when he definitely. comes back and says he has a family now. yeah definitely but. yes but it was a it's a interesting 22 minute i mean it takes place at christmas so right, right. was this like part of a christmas block on nickelodeon i, I think so <laughs> it That's must what i got the christmas vibes watching yeah. it obviously so interesting. It's just interesting to have a 22-minute episode just injected in the middle of the season when they do so many 11-minute you know, segments for their episodes. Yeah. Uh, this one opens up much like Stimpy's Big Day, the first episode that we ever did of Ren and Stimpy. This is a true story that we just made up. So, <laughs> and, of course, Stimpy's in front of the TV watching cartoons, and we get that butt close-up setting the scene of the... Uh, uh, the focus of this episode, Stimpy's butt. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And then a massive fart and a poop-stained rug. <laughs> uh, Stimpy has no idea what just happened. Ren! <laughs> so Stimpy runs to Ren, and he's reading in a beanbag chair. Ren, Ren, you'll never believe what happened. What happened? <laughs> Something came out of my butt. <laughs> That's nice, Stimpy. Something came out of your butt. It made a sound, and it smelled funny. You really lost it this time, Stimpy. You've lost your mind. Something came out of your butt, it made a sound, and it smelled funny? Yes! You're an idiot. <laughs> I know. I'll make another one. Well? <laughs> when he's trying to force out that fart. Well? Very, <laughs> very funny. And Stimpy blows out his ass cheeks. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have an overactive imagination. I don't want to hear any more about your stinky fantasies. (laughs) Stinky is not a fantasy. He is real, and I will find him. I was really funny when Stimpy's butt blows out, 
Ren just kind of like kicks it like it's a deflated tire or something. He just kind of <laughs> yeah. s- sweeps his foot across and kicks Stimpy's butt cheeks. Just yeah. Really sticks out to me and made me laugh. He's just kicking his butt, but it made me laugh every time. Definitely. Every time. And thus begins the search for Stimpy's fart baby, Stinky. Stinky. Oh, Stinky. <laughs> Stinky is nowhere to be found around the house. So let's talk to the nose goblins. I'm a fan of seeing the nose goblins again. Yeah. It's so weird that potentially the nose goblins were edited down in some of those first episodes. And now Stimpy has a prolonged conversation with these boogers. Yeah. Any of you guys seen my friend Stinky? What's he look like? He came out of my butt. Does he talk? Well, he made a sound. He talks to farts, man. Oh, that guy. We haven't seen him. We'll keep a lookout. <laughs> right, fellas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, with no Stinky to be found, Stimpy falls into a deep, deep, deep depression over the loss of his beloved butt baby. <laughs> he, he, I guess. <laughs> he doesn't care about anything, including the TV. He's sitting in front of a TV that's off just staring at it. Not even Commander Hoek and Cadet Stimpy yeah. can rouse him from his depression. I don't care. Muddy Mud Skipper? I don't care. <laughs> Ren has had enough of Stimpy's moping at this point. Pull yourself together, man. It's been three years now. I'm, star- I'm starting to worry about you. I don't care. It's been three years. Three years. <laughs> three? They just kind of slide it in there that he's been depressed yeah. for three years. Christmas time, three years later. <laughs> What the hell? (laughs) Very, very, very weird. Uh, But, you know, give Ren some credit. He kind of sticks with it. He persists with uh, Mr. Catnip Catnip Mouse. Does not work. How about Mr. Litterbox? Nice and stinky. Oh, stinky! That's enough to send him off the deep end and get all depressed even more all over a fart. Uh, Ren offers to help Stimpy get through this. I don't care. And that's it for Ren. Stimpy can just sit there and wallow for all he cares. You stupid idiot. (laughs) And then some indiscriminate time later, could be 10 minutes, could be another three years. Could have been another three years. Who knows? (laughs) Ren and Stimpy are in bed again. So many of these episodes revolve around them being in bed. I want to know why. Yeah. Is it just because it's an easy setting for them? I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's also another hint that their fact that they're a couple where a lot of couples have their most intimate and like... You kind of review your day with your wife or girlfriend or partner while you're in bed going to b- before bed, right? Right, while and it makes them seem more human somehow. It does. Yeah. It, re- it really does. That's also a very good point. Uh, Ren and Stimpy, like I said, they are in bed, and Stimpy is as sad as ever, just staring at the ceiling, watching the clock, and crying about Stinky. He rolls over, and it's revealed that Stinky was watching through the window, admiring Stimpy's shapely bottom. <laughs> He's <laughs> very into Stimpy's ass, that's for sure. He leaves. Stinky leaves without announcing his presence. I mean, just knock on the window, man. Yeah, seriously, dude. <laughs> Next, we see Stimpy calling out for Stinky in a blizzard. Stinky, stinky, stinky. Uh, Ren, he comes to try to coax Stimpy inside. You've been out here for months. months. Come. <laughs> so why are we decorating the tree? I don't know. You've been out here for months. Come decorate the tree with me. You can string the dingleberry garland. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Ren then points to the mistletoe, and Stimpy takes this poorly. Yeah. Uh, the look on Ren's face, I'm going to be blunt here. He was looking for a little bit more than a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're still struggling to understand that they're a couple, this gives it away. Blatantly puts it out there. Blatantly now. puts it out there. They are a sexually active couple. We haven't had sex in years, man. It's all over a fart. It's all over a goddamn fart. It's been three years. Three months, and we still haven't decorated this tree. Uh, <laughs> like, come on. Stimpy does go off on Ren. Is that all you could think of when poor little Stinky is out there in the cold, lost, and alone? He needs me. <laughs> and then off into the blizzard, he goes to look for his fart. Because, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ren is pretty broken up about all of this. He's even willing to sacrifice his dream of giant pecs to bring Stimpy home safe. <laughs> so, you know, good on Ren. A little bit of a softer side. Ren's not a complete asshole yep. all the time. He, most of the time, but not all the time. 
We are in the city now, and Stimpy's search continues, all while his feet take a beating, a true beating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> until they are basically solid ice blocks. You see him with his, like, paper bag shoes, and then his feet with, like, nails sticking through it, <laughs> and then the ice blocks one. It's, yeah, that's painful. It looks painful, that's for sure. Yeah. Alone and lost in the city, Stimpy is having no luck. He runs across a butt that he thinks might have Stinky in it, and it's Santa's ass. And yeah. <laughs> Santa doesn't turn around. No. He just kind of has like, what? Oh, uh, what? What is going on? <laughs> Who just stuck their face in my ass? Because it was Stimpy. <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, Stimpy's then putting signs on light poles. Have you smelled me? <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> Finally, Stimpy is now dragging himself along the pavement. Things are not going well for Stimpy. <laughs> and he sees a bunch of fresh manure for sale. And Mr. Horse, I'm guessing that product is probably very fresh. Very fresh. <laughs> I don't know why this necessarily gives Stimpy any hope at finding uh, Stinky. Seems fairly unrelated. I guess maybe if you're looking for something stinky, maybe it'll hang out with stinky things. I guess. But Somehow just... he thinks this is going to bring his fart here. I mean, he's, he ends up being kind of right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it does work, but... Anyways, Stimpy's head next gets crushed in a gutter by a large sedan. <laughs> Just crushed his head, and along comes Stinky. There he is. Uh, he even sits on Stimpy's butt at one point. Yep. Oh, why did I... That's a terrible Stinky. Oh, why did I ever leave home? I'll never find a home as warm and snuggly as the one I left. So, Stinky takes refuge within some homeless guy's clothing, kind of, sort of. Yeah. But, Stinky is too stinky. Kripes! Somebody light a match. <laughs> and Stinky is chased away. Bye, Stinky. Bye, Stinky. <laughs> Back at home, and Ren is having a hard time coping with the loss of Stimpy. Uh, Christmas alone, that's got to be brutal for the little guy, right? Yeah, oh, I mean, poor little guy. Especially since it's March three years later. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> What's with the boards on Stimpy's side of the bed? I don't understand that. Is it to simulate Stimpy's weight? I don't understand why there's boards on his side of the bed. Doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. There's got to be some meaning out there, so email us, folks. Email us. <laughs> Ren digs out a present and gives it to a photo of Stimpy. There you go. But Stimpy has come home and he's encased in a block of ice. Pow! <laughs> That's a tearful reunion. Yeah. Great job. Uh, Stimpy, he thaws out in front of the fire. Now you just relax. <laughs> and the doorbell rings. Bing bong. It's Stinky. Uh, Ren smells him before he sees him. That makes sense. It's a Christmas miracle. Oh, Stimpy, you have a visitor. I don't care. Oh, I think you'll care about this visitor. So smell my finger. Yeah, that's just the way he holds his finger up and it's stinky. It's just very gross to me. <laughs> <laughs> Father and butt baby get their reunion and they can be together forever. But no, stinky is his own man now. He's got one life to live. He's a man, a man with needs. You understand, Pop? No. Well, meet my fiance, Cora, the dead cod. She's beautiful. <laughs> and then a nice callback to season one, episode one, where they sing memories together. Yep. Memories. And then Cora and Stinky get married. I pronounce, I now pronounce you fart and wife. You may kiss the cod. Great. And they live in Ren's face now. Yeah. Sure. Stimpy, All right. <laughs> Stimpy loves a happy ending by throwing rice at Ren's head. So he just left. He was just sitting on his butt. Yep. And said, "I why did I ever leave?" Yep. And then we must assume it's been months for Stimpy to get back home because seemingly he went right home. Yep. And now all of a sudden, Stinky's got a family. Stinky's and, got a family now. All right. All right. Continuity. <laughs> <laughs> That is an interesting, interesting episode, and I didn't do any research into it, but I feel like it's referencing some kind of a movie, right? I don't know what movie it would be referencing, but it seems to be following some sort of like separation between father and son movie that would have been maybe from the 50s or the 60s, yeah. tearful reunion saying, I'm a man, I have needs, and stuff like that. Let's so turn this kid into a fart. Yeah, turn him into <laughs> a fart. I love that movie when I was a teenager because, yeah. you know, these people are pretty old, 19, whatever. So email us, folks, if you know what movie it's referencing or if it's referencing anything whatsoever. I'd love to know. I didn't research it, so you research it for me, please. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we can roll credits on that one and move on to our next and final episode. And it is called, well, first segment of our next and final episode. It's called Fake Dad. Fake Dad. Fake Dad. Disturbing. Very disturbing. Uh, Ren and Stimpy adopt a convict for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they want Because <laughs> they want to be parents. Okay. Right. It's, it's... They do that. You know, that's a thing. You know, yeah. you let convicts out with pets yeah. who are your parents for the weekend. For the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you go to get a kid for the weekend? Why? Fake dad headquarters, of course. Fake dad headquarters. A fake dad, to be sure. Uh, we have just the boy for you. He hasn't had much love, and he's only seven years old. Come on, bring in the little nipper. <laughs> he's only seven. <laughs> he's only seven. And then up rolls the paddy wagon with Kowalski, a seven-year-old man convicted murderer, uh, convicted of crimes against humanity, yeah, this is... How do you think of this stuff? Uh, this, is, this is like Robin Williams and Jack or something. For real. he is way... He's not seven. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he's not seven. He is disturbingly old. And yeah, this whole episode is... Wow. Like, wh- like what are they even doing? Why are they, why are they passing adult convicts off as children? It's got to be why in a show of so much random shit. This has got to be one of the most random things it, ever. It's got to be <laughs> like <laughs> some sort of fever dream John K had or Bob Camp had. That's yeah. like convicted convicts, weekend furlough, adults that are seven. Uh, they're going <laughs> to adopt them for the weekend. The meat du- sandwiches, <laughs> meat drinks. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious. It's, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Let's go. It's greenlit. Greenlit. We're, green go, we're doing going. it. We're doing it. I've, I've seen that look in his eyes before. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. So bring in Kowalski. Bring in Kowalski. Uh, a frightening mountain of a man. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he's in prison for crimes against humanity, but he gets those weekend furloughs because, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Ren, terrified, stimpy, in love. Yeah. Go ahead, Ren. Give him your love. Daddy! <laughs> Kowalski loved new daddy. Did you love how he picked up Ren and like gently cupped his butt? Yeah. That was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Stimpy simply couldn't be prouder. Uh, so now they're back at the trailer that Ren and Stimpy live at. They have, they're living at a bunch of different locations across these three episodes. Yes. That's for sure. Uh, and let us enjoy some quality time together. Then Ren is making icing. I was, uh, okay, then he's offering it to Stimpy, but Stimpy says they need to share with his new child. He's not my child. Daddy. I'm not your dad. I'm only your fake dad. And only for this weekend. Be nice to the product of your loins. My fake loins. <laughs> Ko- Kowalski then eats Ren and spits him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish all children could know your love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, I haven't said this in a while, but this episode is full of smash cuts. There's a lot of smash cuts <laughs> in this episode. Jamming story pieces together. Just jamming them, jamming them, jamming them. Jamming on the one. <laughs> jamming them together. <laughs> Next, Kowalski is, re- Kowalski is reading in Ren's chair. Read. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is going to stop Kowalski from reading in his reading his prison romance. Uh, great bit. The read line. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. It makes me laugh. Just his intense look like he's can't read, but he's saying read as if that's what he thinks you do with a book. That's what puts you over the edge yep. when you read. say that and concentrate. <laughs> then you can read. Uh, Ren has had enough and he's going to sp- try to spank Kowalski. <laughs> Take your pants down so I can spank you. With a wooden spoon, of course. Obviously. Thankfully, Stimpy to the rescue. Uh, well, it's kind of really Ren rescuing, or Stimpy rescuing Ren more than anything. I would yeah. have to. What are you doing? Shame on you. You're his father. I'm not his dad. Shame, shame, and double shame. You're right. I've been terrible. And just like that, Ren is back on Stimpy's side. Just, yeah. Just like that. That's all it took. <laughs> so it's time for Kowalski. Uh, to have a segment dedicated to smoking. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Long life cigarettes, 800% more tar, the whole pack at once. Just a whole segment dedicated to him smoking. That makes sense for the demographic. It, it, it makes certainly sense. does. <laughs> 
what are you doing? You're seven years old. Smoking will kill you. <laughs> so Ren then hits Kowalski on the top of his head with the spoon. We hear from Stimpy. What's going on in there? Daddy hit baby. Baby mad. <laughs> so Kowalski goes on a crushing spree. My favorite couch. My favorite TV. My favorite friend. That was the best one of the three when he crushes Stimpy. <laughs> best one of the three. And it's picnic time. Smash cut. Smash cut. <laughs> meat. Meat sandwich. Meat on meat, eh? Okay. Here's your meat sandwich. <laughs> Kowalski doesn't like the sandwich and he spits it out. Toast. So they toast it. And it's a hit. Nope, he chokes on it. What is it now? Thirsty. Want drink. What would you like to drink, Kowalski? Meat. Get him a glass of meat, will you, Stimpy? <laughs> he chugs it down and then blows a meat bubble. Great. Oh, and that drink is disgusting. <laughs> yes. It's funny that he has a cooler full of meat <laughs> ready to go, like yeah. liquid meat ready to go. Like They knew that's what they were going to have. Yeah. So why did you even ask what he wanted? That's what they had, had to drink. Yeah, that was the only option. Water, too bad. <laughs> Meat drink. <laughs> Look, Ren, baby spit up. You better burp him. Okay, I'll burp him. <laughs> 36 weeks later, whenever any show does one of those title cards, I don't, uh, interstitial cards with like whatever time later, I cannot think of anything but SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah, any it just is three in, hours later. Exactly. I just I just want it to be like thirty six weeks later, something like that. <laughs> still no burp, and uh, still no burp. There's no way he's going to burp. Not in a million years. And then Kowalski burps the fur off of Ren. Yeah, while screaming, burp! Hilarious. Come on, Kowalski, take your pants down. Take them down. The pants, Kowalski. The pants. So Kowalski does take his pants down, and then there's a dick joke. That's a dick joke. That's a dick joke. That's a dick joke. <laughs> you would say maybe Kowalski is packing quite the beef bayonet? Possibly. I would assume so. <laughs> Definitely quite the <laughs> summer sausage roll for that seven-year-old there. Instantly, Ren is emasculated and gives up. Pull him up. <laughs> Please pull him up. Uh, finally, it's time to return Kowalski. And after all that, baby love daddy. <laughs> and then a tearful goodbye. Ren did really love Kowalski. It's okay for daddies to cry too. We learned a lot of disturbing things. That episode. Yes, we did. That's a very interesting episode. Seven-year-olds are packing more heat than dogs, <laughs> than chihuahuas, <laughs> than chihuahuas to be exact. To be but, exact, to be but, exact. Wow, that episode was... Something else. Something else. Something else. These are some very interesting episodes. Talk about starting season two off with a bang. Seriously. They're really... Serious bang. Really pushing the limits of what Nickelodeon would allow them to have on television. Obviously, this would not fly today. Oh, there's no way. <laughs> I mean, there's so many pieces of this that would not fly. I don't know how Paramount Plus honestly has this stuff rated Y7 still. <laughs> you would think there would be TV 14. on it. I mean, I'm dead serious. I would not show any of these episodes to my seven-year-old. No. Plain and simple. For real. For real. I mean, I don't... I. It's, Whatever. I mean, I'm going to go with it because I love Ren and Stimpy, but obviously, some of the obviously. some of the some of the stuff is just very interesting. Where it's like, TBY seven in 2024 is what you're going to give this. Still, you can re-rate this stuff. Yeah, you can re-rate <laughs> it. It's a different breed back then. <laughs> well, yeah, it definitely was. Our parents didn't watch what we were watching on correct TV, ever. Next segment, <laughs> and it's called Out West, and it's our final segment of the day. Uh, honestly, this segment I have no memory of. Zero memory of. Yeah. None whatsoever. Abner. <laughs> it's completely brand new to me, it felt like. Yeah. In the Old West. When the West was untamed, brutal, and lawless, it took a special kind of man to tame the Old West. <laughs> and we got Abner and Ewat. What a name. Yeah. Ewat. 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 And Abner. And two one-off characters that seem out of place in the Ren and Stimpy universe Definitely. to me. Uh, they are so like, I don't want to say that they're like relaxed and laid back, but they're not nearly as manic and crazy as a lot of the other characters Agreed. come off as. Yes, they are crazy, but they aren't unhinged. Right. 
that just seems kind of a weird more of like a looney tune or something. yeah Come on, abner yes that is a i i didn't think of that but i agree they're definitely too relaxed for how unhinged every character is in this show every character is in this show abner and ewan are ignorant even if they don't know what that means. And they don't know what that means. They don't know what that means. I am ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> so what are they going to do today? Let us hang somebody. <laughs> yeah. We haven't hanged nobody in a long dang time. It sounds like he says damn on TV. Yeah. It yeah. really does. I Subtitles on, it says dang. I'm still convinced that he says damn. Yeah. We're going to throw a dang on the subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> pretty sure he says. Ewat, who are we going to hang how about old lady Cranshaw? We hanged her yesterday. We about done hanged everybody in town. Well, maybe they should hang somebody that deserves it. They need some villains. Where are the villains? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ren and Stimpy, they will be your villains. And they are three-fingered hoek in this episode and stupid the kid. Stupid the kid. Stupid the kid. Perfect name for Stimpy. They are raw, tough, and desperate. And on chickens. Great. And on oh, chickens. Sure. <laughs> Made me think of uh, chocobos from yeah, Final Fantasy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just their luck, they run across a one-horse town, and they're going to go see if they can't find any odd jobs of pillaging and looting. That's odd jobs of pillaging and looting. Yeah. Pillage, pillage, pillage. Loot, loot, loot. <laughs> <laughs> they make it to the sheriff's, uh, sheriff's building, sheriff's office, whatever you want to call it, and there's a sign on that door. Villains wanted. <laughs> I love the way they spell that. Misspelled sheriff along with it as well. Yeah. Just the job they are looking for. Excuse us, Mr. Sheriff. You needn't look any further, for it is we who you are, villains. <laughs> Abner and Ewat take their time processing that information uh, like they are one to do. I, this my least favorite part of this episode is the how they pause so many... I mean, it's demonstrating that they're ignorant and then they're, they're stupid. Right, but right. But the prolonged pauses are just like, just get on with the episode, please. <laughs> yeah. Just please get on with the episode. Uh, they do finally catch on. Why don't you mosey on over to my place and steal my horse? Because there's nothing worse than a horse thief. <laughs> and what do they bring back from this horse-stealing ex- escapade? His wife. His wife. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a sturdy lass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Ren and Stimpy look like they took a real beating trying to procure her for stealing. They're all beat up in it. I don't understand why they're so beat up in it. Is there a scene that should have been in there <laughs> yeah. understanding that? They cut that part in Paramount I, Plus? I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. To bring up the disc. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, you boys can keep her. <laughs> Just remember to brush her and feed her twice a day. And off they go. Ren and Stimpy even fail at getting hanged in this episode. Yes. They've been pretty bad at it. Next, it's our old friend, Mr. Horse. There he is again, Mr. Horse. He's in every episode. Yeah. Mr. Horse, all three. Uh, and they are there to steal him, so they jump on. Let's steal that horse. Mr. Horse really could not be bothered in this situation. So it's the old steal the horse bit again, is it? All right, let's do it if we have to. <laughs> Just stands up and walks out on his hind legs, which is hilarious. Uh, Mr. Horse goes to the sheriff. Hey, boss, these guys just stole me. And, well, sir, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it takes more than just a second for Abner and Ewat to finally catch on. Horse thieves, hang them. <laughs> and to the gallows we go. Uh, Ren has a confession before they hang. When you're asleep, I used your tongue to polish my boots. That's okay. I wasn't really asleep. <laughs> Thanks, Stimpy. <laughs> but Ren is too light, and Stimpy has no neck. They, they, they can't be hanged. They can't be hanged. So, who are Abner and Ewat going to hang now? Each other. <laughs> and they do. Oh, So, there's only one thing that they love more than hanging. And that's singing and a dancing. It's time for a hold down. Jesus. Like <laughs> this this segment is unbelievable. And as soon as I got to it, I understand why I never saw this on TV. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. How does this make it onto Paramount Plus? I really don't know. And that ghost didn't make it. He killed himself with some pills, didn't he? No, it was a knife. He was gonna kill himself with a knife. No, it's poison. It was poison. Yeah. These dudes are hanging from nooses. These dudes are hanging from nooses and saying that they love to do such. Yes. They love it. They Cut love us it. down and hang us again. 
And if you can't find someone to hang kids, hang yourselves. Hang yourselves. Just hang yourselves. It's unbelievable. Is it because it's presented in like a song that it's okay? I I don't know. Really don't grasp it. No matter what way you try to spin it, like, oh, they're really, really dumb. It's just still this. There's a lot of crazy segments in season two that we start up, but this is for sure like. How the hell is this on Paramount Plus? How the hell is this on Paramount Plus? I can almost guarantee you that this ran once on Nickelodeon and yeah. never again. Yeah, exactly. Never again. Yeah. I'm sure they got many angry letters in the mail because it was 1991. <laughs> 1990. Yeah. Letters in the mail. And there was uh, no, you know, internet to look up. No. Part three or part B of episode three. Right. The Lord loves a hanging, so get yourself a lasso and decorate your neck. The feet banjo solo is crazy. Crazy, but amazing. Crazy, but amazing. Uh, did you also notice that when during the feet banjo so- solo, they go to a shot where Ren and Stimpy are also playing their instruments, and Abner and Ewat and four other people are also hanging in the background, and they're all kind of dancing. <laughs> yeah. But the four people besides Abner and Ewat are like stiff armed struggling. Like they are <laughs> obviously hanging and dying. Yes. I was just like blown away by that. I'm like Abner and Ewat are like kind of dancing, but the right. other four are like choking to death. Dying. They're dying. <laughs> <sighs> oh man. Oh, hang that is. Swing a spell. Jeepers. Like jeepers. Roll credits. Yeah. Please can we roll the credits? <laughs> Yikes. I do have to say the song is catchy as hell. Yeah. And I do think that that episode is one of the funnier of the three. I agree. But I agree. it is tough to watch. It is from tough a to watch. Completely different perspective from the nerve ending perspective. Right. 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 Just to so loosely and cavalierly talk about murdering people for no specific reason and then presenting it to children in a fun and peppy song, that is tough. Two episodes ago, <laughs> we're like, we got a lesson to teach kids. Brush your teeth. And yep. if you don't, this will happen. And then two episodes later, we're saying, if you don't have someone to hang, hang yourselves. Hang yourselves. There's nothing that is more fun than hanging other than singing and dancing. Uh, I'm a picking and I'm a swinging. Like jeepers, Ugh. man. Like yikes. Roll credits. <laughs> Roll credits, as we said, please. So let's hit up some final opinions on these three episodes. Let's start at the top. Well, I feel like usually I'm like, these are great. Yeah. And they are funny. They are funny. They are funny. Obviously, we're here to somewhat pick them apart. Yeah. But uh, the overall consensus is a lot of this would not fly today no way like 75 percent of what we just watched in this like 66 minutes or whatever would not no. be on tv no some of the most disturbing episodes we've seen i mean the kowalski is disturbing enough and then you go to this right and it's disturbing for a different reason right uh like you said with Kristen remembering the nerve endings even though she doesn't remember squat yeah she's not show. a she's not a ren and stimpy fan <laughs> I, I remember that very vividly, yes. too. And like I said, Lauren had to look away. I think it's funny because that's partly in the video game on SNES, which oh, yeah. we still need to play, Yes, uh, where they're going through Stimpy's mouth. Mm. And I think Ren's because it's got the tooth beaver <laughs> non, non on the nerve endings. But, I mean, overall, it was still good episodes. Yes. I still enjoyed the watch. I'd say my least favorite is the 22-minute looking for the fart episode. Yes. And then when we laid it all out here to realize how inconsistent it is with three years later and right. three months, they're still decorating the tree. I mean, a lot of the time that'll work in an episode, but not when the setting is Christmas. Right. It's like it could be any other non-setting and it would work. But yeah, so the episodes are good. I laughed. Yes. I enjoyed myself. Yes. But I'm very surprised at a lot of the shit that we watched yes. in these episodes. Like, wow, this was on TV. If, and like you said, maybe some of this stuff wasn't, or at least that episode. Maybe I don't. I don't remember it either. Right. So I'm guessing it was a, well, we played it. That's it. Now you're going to have to go buy it if you <laughs> want to show your kids again. Uh, John Kay, the creator of Ren and Stimpy, was fired four episodes. I believe it's four episodes into season two. Really? Yes. I understand. Yeah, holy shit. That yes. makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So we got one more episode. <laughs> Is I'm, he going to make it even spicier than what know. we just saw? Like, how can you in good conscience produce content for children telling them to kill themselves? Seriously. How can you do that? Yeah. There's a lot of things that was kind of funny that it slipped by, but yes. that just seems like 
how did you put that out? Yes. And you thought that was good. Viewing it from an adult's point of view, I can look at it ironically. Right. And I can laugh at that stuff. Right. But a 10-year-old listening to, you ain't got nobody to hang, hang yourself. You say that to the wrong kid, and that kid is going to be trying to hang themselves. Seriously. Like, honestly. Seriously. Like, yikes. Yikes. Like you said, I'm going to, I I mirror what you said about these episodes where I liked them. I laughed at them. But they are pure insanity <laughs> yeah and not just the normal run no the insanity this puts every episode from season one like on the back burner like 100%. child's play compared to these first three hundred percent especially the first one and the third one because the second one was it had to have been part of a christmas block right yeah could you imagine watching like a christmas episode of rugrats and then a christmas episode of hey arnold and then that episode then this <laughs> this is christmas okay yeah he's searching for his fart okay so the so, consensus is we loved it we but loved it i don't think it would air today in it, any way it possible it would not air you would and, find it on the internet and that's and it you should have done your homework and you would agree yes you, <laughs> you should agree if you don't email us yeah if you don't <laughs> tell us why Oh, I can't wait to get to more Ren and Stimpy in the future, Trav, but why don't we talk about our homework assignment? Let's do it. An epic, epic homework assignment. So which epic. we've both already watched. We so did. We are excited for this one. Uh, Bloodsport from 1990, 1998, I wish. I wish. Bloodsport from 1988, even better. Even I wish. Better. <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Newt Arnold, screenplay by Christopher Cosby, Mel Friedman, and Sheldon Lettish. Latish. 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 Story by Sheldon Latish. <laughs> <laughs> Produced by Mark DeSalle, Yoram Globus, Menheim Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of vowels. <laughs> uh, starring Jean Claude Van Damme as Frank Dukes. I hate that. Dicks. I hate that name, honestly. We'll talk about it more eventually. Oh, yeah. Pierre Raffini as a young Frank, Donald Gibb as Ray Jackson. Uh, Leah Aries, Aries, sure, as Janice Kent, which do they even say her name in the movie? I seriously don't think I so. I don't think they do. I don't think so. <laughs> Norman Bolton, Burton, Norman Burton as C- CID agent Helmer? Yep. CID? What does CID stand for? You know. I don't know. You know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Forrest Whitaker. Hello, Forrest Whitaker. Oh, love his us. second appearance in the podcast. Love me some Forrest Whitaker as CID agent Rollins. Bolo Young. Big fan of Bolo Young. Chinese oh, yeah. Hercules as Chong Li. Chong Li. Chong Li. Chong Li. <laughs> Ken Su. See? Su as Victor Lin. Uh, Roy Chow as Senso Tanaka. And Philip Chan as Captain Chen. His Philip Chan as Captain Chen. Chan is Chen. Chen. Why don't they just name him Chan? Captain Chan. His Captain l- Chan. Chen. Captain Chan is Captain Chen. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Cinematography, though, for those who care, is David Wirth, edited by Carl Cress and Michael J. Duthie. Duthie. <laughs> <laughs> Music by Paul Herzog. Paul Herzog. <sighs> Stan Bush. Production and Stan Bush. Production company, Canon Films, which is a very... When this opened up with the Canon <clears throat> Films thing, I'm like, man... That brings back some 80s movie memories because a lot of these fringe B movie like from the 80s has got it. It's a canon film. Nice. <laughs> Distributed by Warner Brothers. It was released on February 26th, 1988. Budget of one point five to two point three million dollars. Just tell us a number, yeah. folks. I don't no, care. Another one of them <laughs> mystery just, budgets. Just pick a number in the middle and go with it. It's like Originally cost one point five million, but with all the cocaine John Claude Van Damme was doing, <laughs> it was more like two point three million. Some of those faces these people make, yeah, they were hitting some giant gorilla finger rails oh, of coke before. Definitely. <laughs> like I know the rumors are that he does that in Street Fighter, yeah. but the end of this movie makes me think he was on something. The way he's the facial reactions <laughs> when he's blind. And oh my gosh. Street Fighter came out in what year? 1994? I want to say in four or five. So in 1994, as a probably 30 something year old Jean Claude Van Damme. 34 ish. You don't pick up a Coke habit as a 34 year old. True. He was Very true. definitely doing coke during the sport. <laughs> Maybe. It might, it might have been coke in his eyes. Yeah, yeah. The, who Chun knows? Lee blows ah! into his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> its box office was $50 million, and it's $129.7 million in 2024. That is respectable. That's super respectable for 1.5 to 2.3 million yeah. to turn into 50 million. That's that's a 10xer. That's, that's a, pretty bad. Yeah, that's pretty actually. good. 
That uh, seems like one of the lowest budgets that we've seen in a while. Is that just because we're into the 80s right now? I, I think, well, that has something to do with it. Movie budgets just weren't astronomical like they got to be in the mid-90s. I mean, and like you said, an hour of this is in the, what you call it, the tournament. Oh, yeah, in the, in the Kumite. 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 So, I mean, there's no car chases no, and special there isn't. effects and explosions. No. If you really think about it, I bet you most of that uh, budget went to cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> And their time in Hong Kong, because they're really in Hong Kong. Which is cool. So. And Hong Kong at the time was a British-run, uh, I don't, principality, I think is what it was called. So it wasn't directly, like, governed by China. Okay. It was governed by the British government. So that's why there's English-speaking people everywhere, signs in English and all that type of stuff. So nice. it makes sense. It would have been easy for them to film there because it wasn't considered communist, what like mainland China is. So it makes sense for them to have done some shots there. It looks like they may have filmed most of the shots on the same day that take place in Hong Kong because yeah. every day is the same like overcast day. Yeah. So they probably shot the, uh, those 10 shots in a span of 12 hours and then <laughs> probably. went and did a whole bunch of rails and hit some strip clubs because, you know, that's what Jean-Claude Van Damme probably did. So. Uh, with that out of the way, <laughs> <laughs> Trav, why don't you hit me with that outro? Let's do it. Uh, God damn, I'm excited for Bloodsport. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but yeah, first email today is nothing really to read, but it's from one of our listeners, Ben. He sent us in a little picture gif that shows that the likeness of the two characters of Contra were taken from Arnold and Predator and looks like Sylvester Stallone and Rambo, I'm guessing. Yep, yep. And I didn't know that that was a thing, so that's pretty cool because I love me some Contra. Definitely, and it was fully intentional. Yeah. Yeah, like, that was fully intentional by Konami to make that cover that way for American audiences to play out yeah. those things. So That's what I have to say uh, to that. Hell they yeah. look very much like the characters that they're supposed to be yeah. uh, portraying, Arnold and Stallone, yeah. two of the biggest movie stars in the world at the time. And I remember playing whatever Contra was on SNES. Super C. Super C. A lot. But I didn't play the original until I had a 360. Oh, nice. And that was in, like, the top 10 hardest games to 100%. Yeah. And me and my buddy spent two straight weeks just mastering that game. And we were just catching up this last weekend, and I talked about that, this email with him. And he's like, man, that was a crazy time. Like, we spent so much time getting so good that we were able to make it through without dying in that game. That's right? crazy. Which, obviously, the Xbox 360 version is still not as hard as the original version, but pretty damn close. Yeah, I would and, say so. Uh, yeah, so Ben, I already told him, but we got to meet up and do some Contra playing. Definitely. So he said he loves them some Contra, so that's awesome. Uh, next email is from Water Sucks Gatorade is Better. Wants to know our favorite of the OG gums. As in juicy fruit, big red, or double mint gum, is and those were the only three, right? Or is there a fourth one that I'm forgetting? Well, fruit stripe is an OG gum, well, but it's sucked. Right, but I I think of these. I swear these were like the ones that are always next to each well, other at the grocery store. Yes, and the packs of Trident, but that's right, and that's, you know, but it's the same flavor, bubbleish and all that is there. But I think of these in those little packs. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so I Juicy w- Fruit, Big Red, Double Mint. What are you going uh, with? Big Red was last of the list. Last, Not a cinnamon guy. No, definitely not. Last of the list. Too spicy for my little kid mouth. Sure. Um, but if I had to choose, it would go uh, Juicy Fruit probably every time. If I had to pick oh. between those three, Juicy Fruit. 100%. Double Mint, if I'm going out for the evening. Yeah. A double on, mint gum. A little <laughs> breath refresher. I do have to say, of all those gums, the one that I remember the commercial the most is Double Mint. Obviously. Double your pleasure mint. Your very Double your level of fun. Double your excitement. Your delightment. There you go. Double mint gum. Yep, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Next one here is from The Floor is Lava wants to know our favorite non-electronic invention that we wish was around as a kid. And I'll give you mine that made me think of this. The sticky flap on the packs of Eggo waffles now. (laughs) Is a goddamn game changer. It is. A I've game always changer. wanted something like that, and now you don't have to waste a bag clip nope. or try to rearrange it and fold it up. It just has this sticky thing that you peel off, roll it up, and it seals itself. 
That is that is that like, is badass. That I mean, is. maybe I ate waffles too fast as a kid to care, but as an adult, it takes me a lot longer to get through a box of waffles. Well, no matter how you look at it, if you put a ba- open bag of waffles in the freezer, they will be freezer burned within twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you get to the bottom of that bag, it's always freezer burned. For sure, always freezer burned. So. I th- non technology, non technology, yeah, non electronic. Can you oh, think of man. anything? That is tough. That's a really good one because that is such a quality of life improvement over everything. Yeah. That, is, that is a really, really good one. Mm, let me think on it just a second here. Hmm. Mm, I'm trying to think of something non technology that is amazing. Where was this my whole life? I almost sent this oh, to you man. ahead of time because I was man. like. I only thought of this because of the Hago Waffles. <laughs> so I, I had an easy example in my head. Oh, man. I was just like, God damn, this would have been awesome. That is a really, really good one. Let's move on to the next email, and if I come up with one, we'll for get sure, it. For sure, for sure. Mine was good enough. It was I, very it, good. It I mean, the, how do you even, like, that's very good. Yeah. So my last one's just my question for Drew, and I haven't asked in a long time, so what have you guys been watching lately? TV, because it's a TV episode, so give me what TV shows you've been watching lately. So we kind of missed the boat on the Fargo series on FX. Okay. So we watched the first season, never made it over to the second season, but we've been hammering some Fargo. Nice. Uh, We finished the second season uh, a couple of weeks ago. I needed a Fargo break. Because the show's intense, sure, sure. and we're going to start season three pretty soon here, and I can't wait to start it. There's the fifth season just came out, so oh jeez, um, I'm looking forward to getting through that. I mean, I love the look, the feel, everything of the Fargo movie. It translates really well to the television uh, program. So that is uh, one that we've been watching as a couple. Um, the new uh, F1 uh, Drive to Survive is coming out on the 23rd. The new F1 series. It's like a re- reality. Uh, series based on the f1 season from last year made me fall in love with car racing all over again so much so that i'm watching f1 all the time watching nascar watching whatever is racing on television so i'm really looking forward to that lots of juicy stuff happened last season so i can't wait to see like the behind the scenes stuff of how it really went down and stuff and so that's one that i'm super duper looking forward to that's that's coming up here really soon nice yeah, I've never been into like car racing, but I saw something recently on how much of a game changer that has been. That a Giant. lot, of, a lot of people are super into that, so that's cool. I have to check that out. You should. Um, what else was I going to ask you about what you're watching? Oh, Fargo. I've seen the movie a long time ago. Does that have Steve Buscemi in it? Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. Steve. And, spoiler alert: Steve Buscemi ends up in a wood chipper. <laughs> 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 Poor Steve. Poor Steve. Um. What show or what channel is that on? FX. It's okay. also on nice. Hulu. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Watch it on Hulu without commercials. Yep. It's much better without commercials because then it feels like a season long movie. So we just canceled our Hulu. Son of a. Uh, we made can't it, keep made, them all. Made it through. It's always sunny again. Again. With, with somebody. So uh, we went down to no ads and now we're just going to get rid of it for See a while. See uh, But what I've been watching lately, Six Feet Under. Have you ever heard of that show? Yeah, recently? definitely. Definitely. That uh, was a Showtime show? Uh, HBO. HBO show. Yep. So five seasons. Seasons. It's got Francis Conroy. She's in American Horror Story. Mm-hmm. It's got Michael C. Hall from Dexter. Mm-hmm. It's got Lauren Ambrose Young, which I had only seen her in The Servant. I forget if you've ever watched that or no. not. That's another crazy show. And damn, is she a good actor? She plays like a super crazy mom in The Servant, but she's a teen in this. But there's a lot of range from her. But yeah, it's a weird. Weird to explain. It's like an acquired taste. I wouldn't say I was hooked after one or two episodes like I normally am with a show, but about three, four episodes in, you start to care about the characters, and then it's like all based around this family that works at a funeral home in Las, yeah. uh, Los Angeles. But it's so weird to think of a show where almost every character is very unlikable, yeah. but somehow you want to keep watching Interesting. the show. Interesting. So I've never watched a show like that where you're, you're almost not rooting for anyone, and every time you start to root for someone, they make a super dumb decision, and you're like, okay then. Uh, doesn't it have a similar feel to Weeds? I've never seen Weeds. Mm. Well, I would, I'm would. i going to tell you this straight up honest. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. The first four seasons, impeccable. Absolutely wonderful. Nice. And then it just goes off a cliff and sucks. Yeah. We never finished it. 
It just sucked so hard that yeah. that last couple of seasons. So do yourself a favor. Don't watch don't it. Don't watch it, man. Unless yep. you want to be let down at the end of it. Yeah, this one's five seasons and we're in the fifth season and there's been no drop off and it supposedly is one of the best series endings of any show. Interesting. So I'm interested to see how that happens. And then obviously I've been saying I've been watching a lot of D V Z. I completely have finished it. So I am if we keep up with the way we're doing D V Z, I'm 18 years ahead of myself <laughs> with, the, with the homework. But yeah, DBC is goddamn amazing. And then obviously I always watch the challenge. So I'm going to mention this now. We are going to be doing another summer of DBZ this year. Yep. But I we've kind of decided that DB, the way we do D, DBZ is going to change after that. Yep. So be prepared for a bi-monthly, um, a monthly DBZ episode coming up here pretty soon. Last summer of DBZ. Yeah. But we'll have updates with that later. Yep. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the emails. Thanks for listening. Make sure you are emailing us at podcast at overduehomework.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Overdue Homework Podcast. And as always, make sure you tune in to the next exciting episode of the Overdue Homework Podcast.